Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Running back. Yeah. Good running Monday up. morning. Running Welcome back. to Run yeah, It yeah. Back. I, I like that. You guys are chilling. Mm -hmm. This is good. Chandler's, good Chandler's here. Um, that's <laughs> nice. That is Chandler Parsons. That is Lou Williams on the end there. And Sham Sharania joining us from his palace in Chicago. Um, guys, you know when something happens and it's super predictable and then it happens and everyone's like, oh my God, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. That's where we start the show today, with the Los Angeles Clippers. And the numbers we're about to say are offensive. All right, the Clippers are 0-4 since acquiring James Harden, okay? That's not good. Uh, but the loss to the Grizzlies is probably what put them over the top. He's posting a plus minus of minus 67. Yikes. Um, when he's on the floor, compared to a plus 24 uh, when he's on the bench. Is this a mistake? Did they make a mistake, Lou? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I mean, so far, so far, it's all bad, and I and I think I think that's a fair criticism. You know, you have three guys that play the same position on offense. You're asking them to do things differently that they're 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 not used to doing on a defensive end. You know, you got Kawhi guarding fours and fives when they're doing so much switching. It's a rebounding problem. And so it's just it's just a bad it's just a bad mix. So I'm I'm gonna change course. I'm not I'm not gonna be a, a James blamer. I think that's I think that's the easy route out. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame whoever decided to make a decision mm -hmm. at all for anybody. When you felt really good about where your group stood, you guys were building chemistry. You were getting um, really good minutes out of Russell Westbrook, and it's and it was took a while for him to get his get his get his groove back going. And so you kind of take him out of that. Um, Bones Highland has a DMP last night. It's 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 a lot going on over there, so I, w I would say why make a move at all? Not not a move for James Harden. Why why do anything when you feel really good about your group? Yeah, we said before this happened that this was going to be the built-in excuse, right? It's all eyes are on James Harden, and these stats, these plus-minus stats, his percentages, they are rather offensive. Like you said, they're pretty astonishing when you look at Brutal. it. Because we're used to James Harden lighting up the court offensively, and he just hasn't been able to find his rhythm. But this is the built-in excuse. Everything was working. Russell, Wil uh, Russell Wilson, Russell Westbrook's back <laughs> uh, playing at a high level. He's happy. Why fix what's not broken? And then they do this. So it, it was a little shock, but anytime you can add a, a talent like James Harden, I, I respect him for making the, the, you know, the swing for the fence. Now to me, now it's on Tyron Lue. Now, because now, now you, listen, you started all four of the guys. You didn't want to ruffle any feathers. All these guys are Hall of Fame type players that are all NBA. You didn't want to piss anybody off. Now you're 0-4 in this new era. It's time to piss someone off. Now he's got to take that next step. Now he's got to make some adjustments, or it's going to come down on him, because they just moved a lot of pieces around to put this team together, to have this buzz going into the new arena. They tried it. I said two to three games. Now it's four ga four losses, yep. one to the Memphis Grizzlies, who can't beat anybody. Four anyway. ugly losses. Bad, yeah. bad losses. So now it comes on, on the front office and the head coaching, which is Tyron Lue, that he's got to make a change now, because this is getting worse and worse. Shams, any rumblings that you're hearing about? Mistakes, regrets? Well, I think when this first when this first started, it was sacrifice, right? Ty Lue got all four of those guys in the room, Russell Westbrook, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden talked about sacrifice. And that's the one thing that you've seen in these four losses so far. It's like one of these guys has to play that role where we're, it's not going to be about who we were before stature wise. And you saw Paul George tried to, you know, he came out and said, I had to sacrifice. I thought I had to play the glue guy role. Then Ty Lue came out yesterday pregame saying, I'm a glue guy. Paul George is not a glue guy. We need him to be aggressive. <laughs> and then yesterday, Paul George, I think, has his best game since James Harden got there. But then the other guys, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, struggled 15 of 41 from the field. So I, I think finding out which guy, because it can't be Kawhi Leonard, it can't be Paul George. <laughs> out of Russell Westbrook, James Harden, who's going to be willing to make all the sacrifices? And that's not, that's not only on offense, that's on defense, too. And um, Again, like, like Lou Will said, n these guys haven't had that where, where they had to just sacrifice defensively and just lock in defensively, and that might be the only role they have for the night. I, I mean, I'm curious from, from Lou's perspective, you've played with the Clippers, you've played with James, like, how do you get these guys all sacrificing? How do you get one of these guys to actually commit to that? It's just, it's too, it's just too many guys, honestly. Like, if T. Lou says, we're going to play through James, we're going to play through James Harden, uh, you have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George and Russell Westbrook looking like, why? Uh, are we? You know, so 
I just think it's I just think it's time to mix that rotation up. You know, put put one or two of those guys on the bench or, or and put them in positions where they can be successful, man. I, I think James I think James can be successful off the bench. I think Russ can be successful off the bench. And that gives you a great that gives you a great balance. Right now I think they're top heavy. Still trying to figure it out, but it just it just looks bad. Like and I hate and I hate to see that Bones Holland didn't get an opportunity to play last night. Like I know they're trying to figure out the rotations, but again, the guys that are having to sacrifice at this moment are guys that have been, or guys that, that are being asked to sacrifice are, are the guys that's, you know, had early success in the season. And none of these guys have been in this position other than Russell Westbrook. And right. that's what he did in LA, and he took a back seat, and he was in these talks for six men of the year, and he kind of started flourishing in that role. Now, fast forward to this season, he's back starting. He's now playing better than he was when he was in, on the Lakers off the bench. So I think he is the obvious choice that Tyron Lue has to go to. He's got to move him to the bench. It's not going to be Paul George. It's not going to be Kawhi yeah. Leonard. But I, I don't think it's going to be James Harden either. May, maybe they can, like you were saying before the show, maybe they can get him in this mindset that he was the sixth man of the year early in his career. Uh, you know, a kind of wholesome story that now he can end that. <laughs> Anything for a championship, right? If that's all he wants to do, which is everything he's saying publicly, everything his team is putting out there, all he wants to do is winning. If that is requiring him to come off the bench, then we'll see if he's ready to make the next step. To me, though, it's 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 Russ. Just to, just to play yin to yang to that, right? If you put if you put Russ on a bench, you still have James in that lineup. And if you're not gonna play Bones Highland, you need somebody to score the basketball off the, off the bench. So I put James in that position, and everybody is using this term where we need guys to do the dirty work. We need we need guys to be glue guys. Russell Westbrook is playing the hardest in that starting five. I think you keep him in that lineup, and if anybody. It's, it's James coming off the bench. You know, it sounds crazy. It's, it it, sounds I mean, crazy to it? say that, but I think James can give you 20, 25 off the, off the bench a night. Well, here's the thing. The, the starting is the big, everyone's focusing on who's going to come off the bench. Here's the other question is who's going to close out games. And the tweet last night that was just sort of, uh, Clippers were down 15 when Russ subbed in for Harden with a minute 20 left in the third. Clippers came back with Harden sitting on the bench. They tied the game. And then Harden checked back in for Russ with 155 left in the fourth. And then, of course, the Clippers went on to lose Chandler. So, like, screw who's coming off yeah. to start and who's coming off the bench. Who needs to be closing? Well, it's going to be different every single night. And, again, this is on Tyron Lue. This is a feel. You have momentum. This unit is rolling. Stick with it. I don't care if James Harden just that? got there. Like, that, that's a poor substitution, right? And, again, maybe it's early. He's just trying to please everybody. But... With this team, with this much talent, I don't care if it's Bones, Highland, Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, and two of those guys, and two of them don't finish the game. They're going to have a different hot hand every single night, and those closing lineups are to be earned on this team. Starting lineup, do whatever you want, figure it out. they got to make some adjustments. But that closing lineup is gonna could be different every single night based on foul trouble or who's hot or w whatever the scenario is. But last night, that was an interesting substitution. You can see the viral video of, of, oh, of Russ. He's not happy when he's coming out. He's he looks probably confused, just as actually. confused as we are. Yeah. And me and Lou said before, when you come off the bench and those coaches have the hands out, you see them. So if you don't dap them up, you're pissed off. And <laughs> Russell Westbrook was clearly pissed off last night, as he should have been, because I thought that was a poor in-game substitution with the game on the line. And it paid off. It didn't pay off for them, and the, and the Grizzlies got the win. I feel like we don't question Ty Lue a lot. This one was just a very sort of head-scratching moment from Russ on down, I think all of us watching. Um, do you expect changes, Lou, soon to this rotation? Uh, yeah. Like soon, soon? Yeah, I, I say the next game, well, we've seen a change. I, I'm, I'm harping on the Bones Highland thing. Yep. He's been <laughs> very positive for this basketball team and to get a DMP last night, to me, I thought was, was, was interesting. And so I think we're starting to see it, but I, I definitely see a lineup change uh, the next game. And here's the thing, too. We're, it's. This reminds me of the Kyrie Irving trade to Dallas last year, but that was in the middle of the season. They had only had a short right. amount of time to figure it out, and it didn't. And it felt like the whole world was on fire. They didn't make the playoffs. It, it didn't. Now you're seeing that kind of flourish a little bit this year. The good news is for the Clippers, it's four games. They right. have the rest of the season to figure this out. And this is, again, this is a small sample size. And we're go there are two or three game winning streak away from us not talking about this anymore. 
So that depends is, on how they get to that winning. So that, yeah, so that's the good news. <laughs> Until someone gets benched and demands a trade, then we have a whole other topic. But that's the good news for this team. They are talented enough. It is early enough for them to figure this out. It just, to me, it comes on the coaching staff of the, the substitutions, the rotations. How is, how is Tyron Lou going to do this to let this team win and to make all these guys happy? Look, I, I don't know how much say he had or didn't have. I'm sure he did, wasn't against this move, but now Ty Lue, of course, is going to be the guy asked about everything. And the quote that came out um, was interesting. Here's what Ty Lue had to say. He's doing too much about James Harden to try to fit in. He needs to be James Harden. We have to allow him to be himself. And here's the kicker. We're going to play through James. Should they be? <laughs> I mean, that's weird to say. That's it's weird, weird to say. To say out loud. Through James Harden, no, he's James. You're going through Kawhi Leonard. You're going through Paul George. I understand what he's saying. This is a motivational thing. James Harden, stop being passive. Stop mm -hmm. turning down your shots. You see him in Bro the Brooklyn game. He's turning down wide open shots to pump fake to take worse shots. Like James, be aggressive. Be what got you here. Be the Hall of Fame MVP type player you are. That, I think, is why he's saying this. Now, if that was not interpreted that way in the locker room, and if that pissed off a couple people, which I'm sure it did, yep. that's another problem that he's going to have to deal with. But this is just a coach trying to get his guy, get him going. But again, you got three other guys looking like, I don't know about <laughs> that. Play through him? <laughs> so, that's tough, man. I, I understand what T. Lewis is trying to do here. He's trying to get James to feel acclimate it, feel like he's a part of it, and just be yourself and go out there and give yourself an opportunity to be successful. But again, you got a lot of alphas in that locker room. You got a lot of yeah. guys that feel like you should be playing through them. And so they got to find that balance. You know, they, 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 have a, they got a problem on their hands. It's very juggly. Um, all right, Shams, you announced Mason Plumlee is going to miss a couple of months with an MCL sprain. Not good news for the Clippers who need, who need some size. What are they going to look to do? Yeah, th this is this is tough for the Clippers because he was their depth behind Ibiza Zubac. Right now, they are severely lacking big man depth, and they're looking at a big man. One guy that they're uh, targeting, they're pursuing, is Daniel Tice of the Pacers. He's not in that rotation in Indiana. He would need to reach a buyout to get free, but you know, in the Harden deal, they had to get rid of three, four power forwards, and that that obviously has depleted them of the depth. And I think there's, of course, like we've been talking about this, this entire show, there's pressure on this organization. There's pressure on this team. And so Lawrence Frank and, and the Clippers organization is trying to find a big man because they're without a backup center for the foreseeable future. It's just getting better and better. Mm. It's a good topic. Um, let's move on. Milwaukee Bucks, they are 5-4 and four right now. But the bigger story is they've lost two straight while giving up close to 120 points a game. Ooh, look at that pretty Bucks green. It just flat surprised me. They're 25th in the league um, defensively. They're not shining stars at this point, and uh, obviously they're a team that's always looking for the championship, the next one. Are you considering them contenders with these types of numbers? What these types of numbers know is glaring, and you look at this trade, and everyone that doesn't really know basketball sees, oh my gosh, they get Damian Lillard. Mm. He's going to make the offense so much better, which he can and he will because he's going to open up the floor for Giannis. There's not going to be as much help defense. He's going to be able to knock down shots when Giannis is going downhill in transition. But there's a glaring hole here, and it's defensively, and that's something you can't just replace with, with Drew Holiday gone. He's right. probably the best perimeter defending guard, other than our guest coming on here in a little bit. But he, you can't just replace that, and he's so valuable on that end where there are going to be holes, and there's going to have to now be a collective effort for everybody to kind of get on the same page. They're going to have to communicate. A lot of times defense is all about effort and communication. This team's just not doing that right now. <clears throat> And Damian Lillard, he's not hes not an all-defensive team guy. Right. They can outscore people. He can space the floor. But, yeah, I, to me, this trade, it seems so obvious when you when you do it, but would you rather have the six or eight less points from Drew Holiday and, or, or have these huge holes defensively, you know, without him? So it's kind of give or take. Again, it's early for this team, too. Anytime you add someone like Damian Lillard, it's going to take time to get them involved. But you can't really replace Drew Holiday defensively. Um, that's, yeah, that's the question. When you add a new piece or make a big move, we're all going to be like, well, I don't know. Shams, on your end, what have you been seeing from this Bucks team? What's the biggest issue in your mind? Yeah, there are two incidents that, that, that have happened, two things that, that I think get glossed over. One, in mid-October, there was an incident between Adrian Griffin, the new head coach, and Terry Stotts. Terry Stotts, longtime uh, head coach. He was the lead assistant. He steps down after an incident at shoot-around. Um, and, and that, obviously, that was a relationship with Damian Lillard, but also that's your lead assistant. So they're down 
a lead assistant um, before the, e the season even started. And then two weeks ago against the Knicks, there, there was, you know, a, a scenario where Brooke Lopez all year has been playing this new style of defense that Adrian Griffin has implemented. He's been guarding players on the perimeter. But in, in previous years, he'd been playing drop coverage, and that allows him to get blocks, that allows him to get steals in, in, inside, and I think that that's changed. And two weeks ago, players went to Adrian Griffin and told him, we want to change how, we want to go back to how we played defense before. And Adrian mm -hmm. Griffin changed the defense back to drop coverage, and you've seen them be a little bit better the last couple of weeks. But they still, like we see right here in these stats, they're not playing as well defensively and where they hung their hat the last several years. And even from Damian Lillard and Giannis's perspective, like having more picks, uh, pick and roll coverages um, and even Damian Lillard being aggressive out of them and not always uh, deferring to Giannis. I think the talent is there, but from, from a gelling perspective, cohesion, they clearly have a long way to go. Well, that's interesting. I mean, we'll get to Dame in a second, but you, you brought up Coach Griffin, and now I'm wondering... Hmm, how much of this is his responsibility or does, should he take on his shoulders? I mean, a lot of it, he, you know, a new coach, new system, new guys, everything is going to be on him. This team is going to have his personality written all over it, so he has to find his stamp and figure out something for this team very soon. Yeah, and again, when it's a new coach, you have to have the team and the guys buy into your system, to your philosophies, and it seems like there's been some confusion with whatever they're handling pick and rolls or pin down. So the fact that they're just now getting on to the same page, you know, nine games into the season is a little concerning. Um, but again, they're missing their head of the snake defensively in Drew Holiday, and that is a huge hole. They're going to have to have guys like Beasley and Jay Crowder and Campaign, these guys that aren't usually used to doing that, they have to take that onus and they have to start locking up because they're going to score points. Giannis is going to have huge games. Dame's going to have huge games. For them to be a real championship contender, they have to start locking in defensively. I know it's only three weeks in, but at what point do you start to hear mumblings of perhaps like a little buyer's remorse or maybe, maybe we did the wrong thing here with Drew Holiday and Dame? I don't think, I don't think quite yet. Obviously, if they go on a skid like, like the Clippers are on, then, then yeah, there's going to be some chatter, and, and that's the beauty about being in a small market in Milwaukee. We're not going to hear as much about it. How dare you? But I, I don't think so. I think they got a full season again. I think Damian Lillard is such an attribute to that team offensively where they're going to figure it out on the other end. And, I, and I, I agree with Chandler. This is a scenario where Dame has to be Dame. This is where he actually has to be damned. In his first 10 years, he's always been the headliner. He's always been the star player on that team. And now he's going to a team, a former MVP, an NBA champion. He's, he's in a different type of water that he's never been in before. And so he's trying to figure it out. I think this team gets it right at the end of the day, though. Um, Shams, I know, I know you're always keeping your eye out, your ears out. Could we see moves from this team if things don't get back to wherever it is they want them to be? They made their moves. I mean, they, they've depleted their assets. Man. They gave up the, 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 their draft picks. They gave up their swaps. I think for Milwaukee, the talent is there. Like Chandler just said, like you, it's hard to have buyer's remorse this early in, into the year because a lot of it is, is correctable. A lot of it is, is schemes. A lot of it is Damian Lillard being more aggressive and, and being the guy that they want him to be and kind of what Ty Lue's doing with James Harden right now with the Clippers. Giannis, I think, has tried to do that to the best of his ability in terms of saying, this is Damian Lillard's team. We want Dame to be Dame. Like, they need him to, to be aggressive off pick and roll. They need him to be aggressive on offense. And then from a defensive perspective, they need to figure out how they can play because Drew Holiday was massive for them, uh, you know, on the perimeter. And who knows? I mean, I, clearly they didn't know that he would end up with Boston. So, again, in that scenario, if they knew Drew Holiday would end up in Boston, would they have made the trade? I think, you know, we'll, we would never know. What a strategy Ooh. move that was. Who saw that come in? All right, thanks, Shams. We're going to take a quick break right here. When we come back, Pat Beverly. That's the tease. Yeah. Pat. He got his Beverly. leg across this guy. <laughs> Look at this whole this setup. Guy. Look at this him. <laughs> the Pat Bev pod. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. You know why I'm here, you know what I came to do. If it's you against me, no, I ain't gonna know. You know why I'm here. Pat Beverly, excellent defender. He is a competitor. You know, yeah, you know why I'm here. Oh, I love it so much. 12-year NBA vet, three-time All-Defensive, currently now on your Philadelphia 76ers, joined by the incomparable Pat Beverly. Well, we live. What, what? <laughs> yeah, we're live. You're good. You're good. You're good. 
Okay, Pat, my question is simple right off the top. I know you've played with both these guys, different areas, different times. Which one do you have more dirt on? Like, if you had to ruin one of their careers <laughs> moving forward, uh, who would easy. it be? <laughs> uh, first off, I want to say uh, you guys have a, have a great, great show to start. You guys uh, provide a lot, of, a lot of intel that people don't really appreciate. And I do appreciate it because I do. I'm, I am locked in, and I and I appreciate the words y'all use and how y'all wordplay and the, the topics y'all have. So I, I want to give y'all some love. Start, you know, before we start. Oh, the show. thanks, Pat. Before thanks, he kills y'all. <laughs> With that being said. With that being said, <laughs> kill him. Right, right. So I'm not, you're right. So with that being said, it's funny that. You know, because y'all also funny to me, too, because it's like, you know, I can come on y'all show and I can give y'all whatever type of ratings y'all go get from the show. <laughs> and it go viral and y'all have viral clips. But I'm pretty sure no one, even Shams, uh, is even subscribed to my podcast. So oh, I don't think that's what? true. I, I believe you. I believe you. I don't believe everyone at that table or yeah, Shams. Get on, get on channel. You know what? Right. I mean, is too much. Yeah. Right. It's funny. It's funny, but until I'm on your show and trying to show you love, so I just want to make sure yeah. that the love channel is here today. Are you tuning in every week? Nah, but he right. know he know I'm a fan of the show. We done discuss, we done discussed the show before. He know that. I just I, it, and it's free. You know you in order. I know you guys might be ignorant, don't know how to follow podcasts. I, yeah, I, I that is walk, true. I can walk you through a tutorial if you need. I need that. I need that after this. <laughs> okay, look, and it's free too. It's right on YouTube. You can press subscribe. That's it. Oh, okay, now we can go to your show. All right. Do, do, do you talk to him? How, what kind of teammates, Pat Bev? Now I'm getting a vibe. Oh, Pat Bev was the best teammate. Listen, I, he, he first came to the Rockets. He was a young boy, but he's always was tough as shit. <laughs> no bullshit. A lot of guys talk. He backs it up. Pat, Pat's been my man ever since we were teammates in Houston. And everything he says, he means. He, 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 he's not phased by anything. And so when you see, there's some guys nowadays, they're barking. Mm. They're looking. They're looking Name for. Him. They're looking for clicks. You know who you're talking about. Not Pat Bev. <laughs> Pat Bev is about it. Me and my brother battle. I appreciate the eight, eight, eight hey, the Chef Bill. There's a Bill? new. There's a new sheriff in town, PB. Hey, look. So look. So look, I'm gonna tell y'all the story behind that since you want to get on some gossip, gossip and shit. <laughs> so like, I got. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to beat Jeremy Lin. Shout out to Jay Lin. I'm trying to beat Jeremy Lin for a star and spot. Remember, he just come off Lin Sanity. The odds are against me once again. <laughs> Right, so I go to Chandler, I Chandler, hey man, it's Chandler, I guess Chandler's dad was a chef, so we make wordplay on that, like, yeah, it's a new chef in town, you know, I had to take that, <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Big Parsons too, that's my big guy. <laughs> oh, that's too good, Pat. Listen, let's talk about something serious here, the, oh. your Sixers, they're off to an 8-1 start, you guys haven't lost since opening day, what's been the single reason, in your opinion, for your guys' success early on? I think, uh, instantly, like, knowing your role. And y'all played on teams with me, and y'all know me, I'm the guy in the locker room to go, go get the roles established quick. Like, nah, my boy, that ain't you. You don't do that. You don't, you don't work <laughs> like how, how Reese wrote. You don't work how Joel worked. Like, you know, you gotta provide something else. You know, it's, it's a dinner table, but in order for the food to be good, you gotta have nice chairs. You gotta have nice silverware. You just can't be the, 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 the turkey and the chicken. Now you gotta be the fork. You might have to be a spoon. You might have to be a plate. So, you know, we got our roles picked down real well and we take them very seriously. And it makes the game that much easier. Well said. And with that being said, you are plus 58 coming off the bench, which is the best in the NBA. So shout out to you. Obviously, this is my first time ever coming off the bench in my in my 11 year career. I, I think people forget about that. I don't beat a ton of people out for starting jobs, people that ain't playing basketball no more. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And you guys are obviously doing this without James. Yeah, we both play with James. We know how close we are with James. How was that whole process with you? Were you disappointed? Were you hyped? Was it getting distracted? Like, how did that shake out for you? Well, you know, like, the hoopers at the table, you know, we naturally hoopers, and we understand, like, a good team and a not good team. So, like, with James, we would have we would have been, like, we would have been stumping shit. But without James, we still would have been stumping shit. It just might have been a little harder. We might not have to go through the front door. We might have to sneak through the window in order to stump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So like it's different. It's a hundred ways to skin a cat. We just have to find our 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 way, and our way is you know defensively playing fast, uh, posting it, uh, making reads off that. And it's been it's been a vibe. It's been a vibe. I feel like we ain't lost in like two months. Pat, I, for those of us who just are fans, right? We don't understand sometimes the behind the scenes, the business of it all. You know, obviously you're close to James, and, and when he wants out, how does that? play into relationships? Do you try to convince him to stay? Like, how, how does that work out? 
No, so when I got to the team, it was already a, it was already conversation. So, you know, uh, so I kind of knew that coming in. But when I seen him at training camp, you know, he looked in shape. He looked good. You know what I'm saying? The energy was great. You know what I'm saying? Like his, he, he was, you know, he was the, you know, same James. He was, he was good in practice. He was coaching in practice. So uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't look for anything different. I was actually just excited to see, you know, be back on the, on, on the team with, you know, an old friend of mine. I mean, there's a guy, uh, Dallas Mavericks, you, the guy, the reporter, the knows, broadcaster. Knows. Um, he had a he had a rant the other night. It went viral. And, and when you're friends with someone and they're the target of <clears> moments <throat> like this, and I want to play a little bit of it and get your reaction on the other side. Hey, James, you're the problem. If this doesn't work this year in this system with this team, <laughs> then you're going to go and point fingers at everybody else, <laughs> and you're going to go back home, and you're going to start swiping right for another team, and there's not going to be anybody left. Because, James, you're not the beard, you're not the system, you're the problem. I mean, it's... Okay. He so practiced that in the mirror it, a couple of times. It was delivered before. without any sort of stumbles or anything. What'd you think? Uh, first off, Right, everyone's entitled to their opinion, right? And and, and us as athletes, like, it, you know, it started, you know, from the heckling fan, and it, it started, you know, more on the Instagram, then it got off on the Twitter. So, like, from a basketball player, like, we see this, you know, we see this, and it's funny. But one thing that the media don't understand is that you can say something like this, and the team is playing bad, and it might not be for a James Harden. It might be for, a, a, you know, a mid-level guy, a guy who... It, you know, earns ten to fifteen million dollars, and you say something that, like that about him, you're talking about this can potentially make sure this guy's not in the NBA anymore. You know, so like I want, I want to be aware of like the things that says throughout the media for basketball players. Is his opinion his opinion? Of course. You know, what I'm saying the stats, that, the, the 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 facts that he brought up. You can really look back and be like, damn, like he's absolutely right. But that's his truth, and it's you know, it's always three truths. It's his, it's the other guys, and it's actually the truth. So. Uh, I'm, I think it's ballsy. I like that he did it. But, you know, do I agree with it as a, as a player? No, but it comes with the territory. You know, we <laughs> make a ton of money. We're on a pedestal all the time. And when you don't win and you don't, you aren't successful and at a high level all the time compared to the greats, you're going to get some of this kind of uh, backlash and criticism. Pat, you know, we still got, we still got brothers in that, in that Clippers locker room. Um, off to a slow start since, since the oh. Harden trade, 0-4. They're going to be an awful regular season team. They're going to be a dangerous playoff team because, you know, the playoffs are all about matchups. But when it comes to off season, they're going to be, they go be God awful because it's going to be like, it's going to be, it's, it's going it's to be one person that's going to be left out, you know. And they what, didn't you go see, what, you, what you see is the issue, though. No, nah, it's just, it just camaraderie. Like, they ain't spending a lot of time with each other. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you can't practice a lot because you practice a lot. It, it, now you got to worry about your health. You know what I'm saying? Throughout a long jetty of a season. You, you know, it's hard when you get new guys from training camp. You know what I'm saying? And they haven't been in training camp with you and don't know the plays. And James not trying to step on nobody's toes, you know, with step backs. And Kawhi go get his. So it's going to be an odd man out. They just got to pick who they want the odd man out to be. And if y'all was watching my podcast, I actually spoke about the subject to, like, inform everybody. So y'all, you know, maybe y'all have a little bit more tasteful information while I'm on y'all show. But on it's it. going to be the odd man out for sure. And now, Pat, you're, who, who is that going to be? We kind of argue all the time on this. I think it's going to be Russ. He Who's thinks it may have male? to be James. Who's the alpha it's, it's, not, it's, it's not going to be Kawhi or PG. So one of okay, Russ or so James have to come off the bench, right? No, I, I want to say okay? come off the bench. I wouldn't say technically come off the bench. It's just somebody got to be cool of reading the game and understand, okay, No, cool. but one of them got to come off the bench, bro. Now, it's going to be a 7 to 11 type of game, and I got to do other things. Like, I might have to go in there. I might have to be a defensive guy tonight. You feel me? Like, and, and then another game, as, as pros, we understand, like, it's, you know, we're doing all this to get to the playoffs. When we get to the playoffs, they're going to be one of the most dangerous teams because it's all about matchups. So, like, they just have to weather the storm th uh, throughout the season. I think that's, you know, now you see you, you, you see coaching. You know, now you get to see how good Talu, Talu is. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, now going back to your guys' squad, Pat, Joel. Obviously but they're god-awful right now. 
Oh. Hot <laughs> garbage. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it's it's unfortunate, but these are the woes that you got to go through to become a successful team. In order to, you know what I'm saying, to ride your bike, you got to fall. In order to know how to rollerblade, you got to fall. Ooh. In order to know how to ski, you got to fall. So that's the falling point right now. We said this, too, and they're also about a two- or three-game win streak from nobody talking about this anymore anyway. Yeah. So the winning solves everything, which is what you guys are doing. Joel, MVP season. Tyrese Maxey. Obviously, he's blowing up, looking like the most improved player in the league. In your opinion, is this the best duo in the NBA, or is this one of the? Like, where do you rank those two guys? Because they are straight balling right now. I mean, it's you know we we've been having a uh, our schedule's been fortunate. You know, <laughs> we play some, play some good teams, we play some young teams, uh, and you know, our, so our schedule's been fortunate. We've been you know we've, we we had some you know some 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 home games. Um, we, we're not even really like, I think we like 40% of like our offense and like 40% of our defense. Like we, like nurse ain't really even like open it all up. So like, we still like, you know, we just made a trade, obviously the James Harden trade. We got, you know, Covington and Batum and, you know, we were used to PJ Tucker through the whole training camp. So like, this is a, this is a learning process for us also. But, uh, I think when you have a monster like Joel and B and I, and, you know, you, and Lou and Chandler, y'all know when you get a young player like that and you just want to, you know, as me as being one of the veterans on the team, you want to just, this is how you do everything right so you can maximize all your opportunity, you know, and mix with, he's in a gym first, you know, <laughs> earlier than anybody else. He's the last one to leave. You know, when you get that type of potent, potent uh, duo, I think it, uh, it, sets, it sets up success instantly. Yeah, and you've played with a lot of big greats, Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, Rudy Gobert, Cat, AD. Perspective. Perspective. Is, is Joel the best big you've ever played with? So when you play with bigs, right, and that's and that's your perspective, you think the big at the time that you play with is great <laughs> until you see another big. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I thought Dwight Howard, I've never seen anything like it until I seen, you know, Carl Anthony Towns. You know what I'm saying? Then I seen Carl Anthony Towns. I'm like, man, it's my fuck cold until I ran into Joel Embiid. Oh my <laughs> that man is different. He's different. It's different playing with him and playing against him. You know, he know how to like he, he and and I don't think people understand his IQ and his, his like his 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 understanding for the game of basketball. He's his his shit is at an all time high. Respect for him. Respect to him. I like that. Also, you play with Anthony Edwards, another star. The other night he was called for a weak, weak, weak technical foul, just staring <laughs> down Dario Saric. Do you agree with that? Do you think the refs are getting a little too loose with these with these whistles? No, it's perfect, right? You got to understand the game that the, 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 that the NBA and, and this media like to play. I think that's why I've been fortunate to be successful throughout, you know, this kind of kind of media stint while I'm in the NBA. You stop a play like that, you put highlight on the play. Right, you keep that play going. Maybe it's too fast. Maybe Steph Curry comes down, bangs the three. Right? I don't even think the referees are reffing actually what's going on. You stop that play. You can you can put that play on instant replay twelve times before a play gets going on. Now you, the, the more fans get to see the dunk over and over and over. It's like an algorithm. You know, you just gotta understand the symbols, everything. Don't let that get over y'all head. I know I'm giving y'all free game. But no, I, I, I disagree with you though, Patch. If 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 you make a if you make a play like that. I think you draw more fan. You draw more fans in when you when you allow the guys to show emotion. You allow that that element of the game back into it. If we can keep it under control, I, granted, some guys are gonna take it too far. You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody gonna but mess you, it up. But you, but you, you talking to the the casual fan anyway? You know what I'm saying? You you talking to the fan who don't think Draymond's a good basketball player or Pat Bev's a good basketball player because of points. So you can't, you can't, you can't feed that to them. You got to feed the other stuff to them, the catchy stuff, the technical foul and oh yeah, yeah. You know, you got to feed that to them because we're not dealing with real basketball fans a lot. We're dealing with the casual ones. So look, since we talk, since we talking about fan celebrations and bringing it back, you've championed the too small celebration. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is there one guy you still got on your hit list that you trying to you trying to hit him with the too small? Hey Lou, I ain't gonna lie. If you came out of retirement, I'm looking for you. You know me. Man, you know I, me, I got Lou. my first 40 point yeah, game you know against me. Pat Bear. Yeah, you did. You played well. I, I didn't get a chance to value you the, the, the way I needed. 
But you know me, I'm pulling that. I'm pulling the too little on everybody. I don't care. I'm here to play basketball. I'm here to have fun playing basketball. <laughs> I'm here to player. impact winning. <laughs> I, you feel me? Like I'm, I'm pulling it on everybody. But look, I'm looking at you on the screen, three. Patch. How are you? So that's what I'm saying. How can you advocate for them to stop play like that? That's a distraction too. It's so a technical you, foul. How now. you don't get a technical foul for that? I wish I would have. I would have <laughs> got more views from it. <laughs> Pat, how much money have you paid in fines and technical fouls Ooh. in your career? Uh, what they say, some to like seven hundred thousand. I'm close to. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm sure. It's getting, Can you write I'm that sure it's getting spent in some good places, man. Good charity hey, but, work. But, yeah, no, nah, it ain't. NBA cares nah, throwing it. it NBA cares <laughs> throwing nah, it in a good pot. It ain't. Said, nah, nah, it, ain't. it ain't. It ain't. Hey, but Chandler, you feel me? I'm having my way right now, man. Life is good. I can't complain. Uh, look at you, you got the vibe set up. You got your legs <laughs> crossed. He got the, he the Mr. Brain. Nice watch. I see what's going on. <laughs> that ain't going with uh, my head. You know, life uh, is this good. Old, this old thing. Life is good. Oh, this little Pat man. Bell podcast. <laughs> hey, come on, I thought y'all had some most. I had, I had some good questions for me. Let's talk <laughs> about. Yeah, I, we just we just wanted you all so we could have a good time, Pat. Yeah, I just wanted. We just, wanted, we just wanted to hang out with our brother for a little are. while, bro. All right, Pat, I got something. I got something. All right. Talk to me. Give me a good one. Who is an all NBA type player Ooh. that you kind of think is trash that you lock up every <laughs> single time? <laughs> and you can uh, go old school or you can go new. Mm. Well, he just said uh, old, school, you really, I, old school, you can't count because the way I be feeling out of the games, I'm 35 years old. The way I feel <laughs> out the games right now, very different than I felt before. So I ain't gonna go old school. You know, they be in their feelings anyway, so I ain't gonna go too old school. <laughs> but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go new school. I'm gonna go new school that I lock up. That's that's enjoyable. Like I enjoy locking them up. Ah, uh, shit. Who we, who we play? <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I don't really get to touch that dame a lot. Um, I don't know, man. Next, we got to do it again. Next time I play somebody, I lock them up, then I'll I pick that guy. All right, you got to come back on. Patch, before before you go, let me let me ask you this. You know, we've played for a, a number of coaches, different ones. Give me one coach, and I'm going to see if we agree on this. <laughs> Give me one coach that you just absolutely don't agree with. This dude don't know what he's talking about. Ah. Shit, I got one. We want to go viral too, Pat. He's still pushing. Okay, I know, I know. Say less. Uh, okay, okay. But our relationship with him was different, Lou. Mm. Oh, you feel me? Our relationship with Doc was very different. You feel yeah. Me? I think, I think, I think. You know, like, like. Me and, me and Doc used to have conversations that you know nobody on the team knew we was having. I, y'all probably had the same thing too. I think you look at the Doc situation where you should have been looking at the Clippers L. Frank t- situation. Yeah, no, we love Doc. We love right, Doc. We love Doc. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? I think that the Clippers situation, you get a, you give away your backbone. You know, this is why people need to understand what the heart and soul. And I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about how they got to now, right? You make the Chris Paul trade. People clown you, but it really turns out to be a diamond in the rough. You got me, Montrez, you got Lou Will. You got guys that's going to do whatever for your organization. Literally boost your organization so you're able to, to, to attain Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Now, what you don't do as an organization is what, what, what you know, people don't understand yet. And, they, and, and, and it's some, some organizations do. They do understand, you know, the heat. They understand what the culture is and they, and they, and they, and they pay the culture and they, 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 they take care of the culture. But if you don't take care of the culture, the domino effect is now. If this team doesn't play now, you talk about a potentially somebody in the upper office losing their job. If For we've sure. been real, all because you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to, uh, uh, this shit, we, we, we ain't even the oil, Lou. You just didn't want to put no motherfucking uh, car washer fluid. We the car washer fluid. <laughs> yeah, now you know what I'm saying? We okay, with, we okay with, and I'm saying that we okay for being a car washing fluid, but we understand what the engine oil is. We understand who the gas is. We understand that, but you still, in order to see, you need car washing, uh, uh, the, 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 the fluid to go on your, the window. So, like, they, 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 they mishandled that. They misjudged that. And now you're in a position like a, a guy or guys in the organization might potentially lose their job or these guys might be traded. Chandler's so lost on the analogy. Chandler, do you understand the words? What, what the is hell? wrong with you? My last question, Pat. <laughs> this in-season tournament, I still don't fully understand it. Oh, is, for the is there like an incentive for a guy like you to, to does, this, does this motivate you at all? Is the 500 racks, is that, is that 
Hell yeah. yeah what, what, is that, is that the, that's, so um, the money is the incentive on the, just in this tournament? No, I don't think the money is all. I think, you know, naturally we hoopers regardless. Like, I'll guarantee Chandler, you go to a Y right now hmm. and it's a great pickup game, you go take your game to another level, regardless hmm. if you're playing for money or not. So I think they just getting the, you know what I'm saying? I think them putting the, you know, the end season tournament in, I think it's great for the fans. It's a different court, you know, but the vibes out there, it's real competitive. We played Detroit, they all, they was on our ass, you know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> Like it, it makes the game, especially for young teams. Young teams, where this patched. is their championship, it makes it makes the game you much better. You know why Detroit was on y'all ass? Mm. It was that 500k. <laughs> they got a, a lot of young boys on that team. That 500 gonna go a long way. Where that yeah. 500 500k in Vegas for Pat Bev go a long way. You know how we do yeah, Vegas for now. Sure, for sure. And I and I think it's coaching too. Right? <laughs> I think coaching when you when you get to a team like that, the Detroits and the, and you know the teams that's not you know you know it's probably not gonna be in a playoff contention or might be in a play-in. I think this this shows your you know how good how prepared you are, how good a coaching you are, how how, how you have your team ready. I think it helps coaching too and coaching. Jobs. Pat Beverly, this has been, I've just been thoroughly entertained. It's the you have, Pat. You have yet Bev to ask a question, though. I, I honestly, because I, it's, be, it's better if they do it, to be quite frank. <laughs> I just feel that's like, not true. Yeah, that's no, not for, true. It is, I promise. <laughs> um, it's the, the podcast, the Pat Bev podcast. Subscribe and listen. It's free for God's like sake. Everybody subscribe. Free. And, and, and we speak about women's basketball. We speak about Ooh, women's basketball. Yeah. Honestly, you're that. women up here. You're a woman up here, and we're going to get a woman always credit because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the women. So That's we right. speak WNBA. They are <laughs> underpaid. They need to get more teams. Uh, the guy, Clay Travis, made something about a yeah. high school team, a WNBA team. Like, no, none of that. So, like, all love to WNBA also. Yeah, we'll edit that name out. We don't even like to say it, Pat. Uh, we appreciate <laughs> the time. This was awesome. And uh, we'll be back with That Man's Got Family. Hey, rest up Kelly Oubre, too. For sure. But show sure, y'all didn't even ask about how my guy doing. Y'all something else on this show. Run it up, the running back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Very impressive. Oh yes, it is time. And uh Mr. Holmgren Yoinks. Mm -hmm. this is not it. Welcome to the league. What? <laughs> is that it? That's the moment? That's it. Uh -huh. All right. Just happened to be with by a second year player, which isn't dope. What if it happens twice? What does that mean? No. Can that, that happen? Teaser? Is that even possible? It is. That's, that's In the same game? Well, different, oh, guy. different guy. Yeah. But Listen, same, as, a big, as a big, you're supposed you're gonna to get, get dunked, dunked on. Yeah. Man. yeah. Even when you look like that? Well, you more when you I look know. like that. <laughs> more, more so. <laughs> and boy, what do you mean? What do you mean, you people? You people. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't even try it. We already got in trouble with Pat Beverly. I don't want to. By the way, for the record, I don't even listen to my own podcast, if we're being honest. John Collins. Oh, yeah. A semi slam? Oh, this is what he does. Semi slam's funny. Come here. Oh, and he gave him a and hug. He choked him out. <laughs> and he choked him out. Hot. Take this ride with me. <laughs> she said hot. <laughs> oh, speaking of, who did, what did you say Jaime Jaquez looks like? He looks like a 70s porn star. Nice. And he wow, breaks him off. Oh, oh, whoops. My. Who, who's that? Jaime Jaquez, UCLA, from Camarillo. All right. Camarillo. Shout out to shout out cousin does, Braden with high school. Uh, I'm sorry. I ain't, Jaime Jaquez. I'm not going to do that. Jaime Jaquez. You can do it. Me. I mean, he, it's good hair. Hey, uh, that's, now that, that's, I like that. Is that even a push off? Yeah, he yeah, actually just broke him off. Who is that? Oh, that's my boy Bogey. Nah, Bogey. That's all right. He just tripped, y'all. <laughs> It's a right there. Right there. Right there. Complete side note, there's two bugged on of it. It's just, and they're not related. No. Not related, yeah. Just the very it's like John Smith. It's a mm. common name, I guess. Giannis. Breaking news, Giannis gets kicked out for dunking on this guy. Because <laughs> the referees are so weak. Yeah, that was not my favorite moment. That was nasty. Hmm. I feel like we're numb to him doing this though. I mean, shouldn't we be though? Who is the who is dude coming over? Who's 35? It's a guy that just got dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Toppin. Uh, oh, not oh, the that's fun. That was Do you think the Knicks miss Obi Toppin? No. no. All right, that was my question. <laughs> that's all I have for you. <laughs> nah, I don't. Nah. Mm. He is bouncy though. I know. There's moments. All right, I'm glad you brought up the technical on Giannis because there have been a few technicals that have been um, sort of question marky for people. So Draymond, we'll start there. Ejected after a review of a play with. Donovan Mitchell taking through this. This is Saturday. So the review, if you look at it, shows that he had committed a technical foul. It would have been his second on a prior play. They were reviewing a foul by Mitchell and gave Draymond the tee.
for shoving him on the previous play. It's such a weird way to do it. Uh, come on, Looney said he didn't think it was possible to actually get teed up for a previous play. I didn't think you could either. It's <coughs> almost like statute of limitations, Chandler, but have you seen this? I've never seen it. No, usually it's called right there on the spot. Yeah. Right? And then oh obviously, God. you know, Donovan Mitchell got into it, and that was the second tee. And I think this is a situation where Draymond Green's I didn't you know, know you could do that. reputation. Me and I think, listen, those refs are human beings. They're probably just as sick of, you know, the chirping and the, mm. the arguments with him. Just to, you know, it, it probably annoys them just as much as an, a, a fan. So I, I, I've never seen this happen where you kind of go back right? to the play on a technical foul. But again, this is this, they're kind of used to this behavior from him. So I think this is just a reputation thing. That's, I mean, that's, he just has a target at this point. Yeah, some guys have more leeway than others. And so I, I think this is just on brand for Draymond. <laughs> Anybody else, I think this is, they just move on. Yeah. Um, the Anthony Edwards one, first of all, just love, love it all. But um, he got called for a technical. I hate this tee. This, yeah. I hate this tee. This is not. I mean, come on. That's not, this I don't get it. It's like the Giannis. I don't think that's taunting. The is NBA it? has to relax, man. They got to relax. I understood at one point we had an image issue. With like, so much trash talk, so many guys talking to the referees <laughs> after every single play. But this is good basketball. This is emotion. This is what the fans pay to see. They want to see your best athletes play above the rim, play with emotion, like they're having fun. If you're taking the fun, you can't criticize players for not caring right? about games. And then when they do, you tee them up when they're showing emotion. The NBA got to relax. Does that even consider, is that a stare down? No, that was weak. <clears throat> and the honest one we're about to show is even oh. weaker. And here's my problem with the NBA, too. You want to harp on players resting and all this load mm. management stuff, and it's not as good for the fan experience. <laughs> well, neither is kicking out Giannis in the three minutes into the third quarter of a game in the, sec in, the, in the second half with so much basketball to be played left. So you want to get on players for resting and not being able to be on the floor? Don't kick out the star players no. for doing things like this if that happens to be their second. So if that's his technical, se second technical foul, you got it. he's tossed. I'm sorry. I I get, no, I get it. He's I tossed also, from the game, and now the little little Johnny that came to see him that we're protecting from load management, now he doesn't get to see him play anyways because the guy can't show emotion after banging uh, on somebody. I never thought about it like right, that, It's ridiculous. You got to clean it up. Make gotta, up your mind. You got to clean it up. You can't harp on load management but then kick out a player three minutes into the second half. Well, she's obviously talking about Giannis because Giannis got booted in that game and then sat on the bench, and then, you know, fun stuff came from that at least, but I don't think anyone was in support of him, the superstar, getting kicked out. This, again... He does that every time he does it. I think they thought he was staring someone down, but if you really watch the video from the other angle, he's just looking into the air. He's There's nothing also there. He's just showing emotion. It's a great play. They're going on a run here. Again, it's three minutes into the second half, and now 90% of this crowd came to see this guy play, and he's no longer in the game, in the rest of the game. To me, this is weak. This is whack. They can't do this. You know what's funny? He wasn't done celebrating. He, he was giving him yeah, the two he did, he, did, he did the double pad. He wasn't even done yet. He still had more to say. But NBA, y'all got to chill, man. Let these guys show emotion. Let these guys be the best athletes in the world. And let these fans have some fun, too. They're, Thank you. They're performing. Let them perform. Yeah, it's a performance that they paid a lot of money to see. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Run it up, the running back. Run it up, running back. Run it. Well, that was a show. It happened. It's over. Pat Beverly mad at all of us. Look, you didn't even know this show was in podcast. That's, I didn't. We didn't know. By I the did way. not know. Um, I don't. Wa I don't listen to podcasts. I'm I have one. This Joe Ro is this Joe Rogan I hear all about. Never listened to it one. Apparently, time. that's a big one as well. Lou threw us under the bus though, so I'd like to just point that out as yeah, a teammate. You're just, Do you want to talk about it? I was running in the stampede. I had to take <laughs> care of Lou one time. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Now we know how it's going to go down if things get weird. Uh, that does it for us. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back.